YouTube later. Okay, so starting now. You are about to enter a Twisted Plot adventure. It is different from any Twisted Plot adventure you've ever seen before. Which is probably, you've never probably seen one before because they were not that popular. Do instructions for the sake of this, let's say yes. You are the star of the story, and you are in control. Oh, just like a video game. You are the figure below. You decide how and where to move. Here are the commands you can use. Walk, climb, jump, zip, stop, turn right, turn left, quit, get object, use object, and inventory. Question mark to see the list of data. So, like adventure games, there's a bunch of verbs you can type in, get, look at, etc. And in video games, you can control where your dude is going and maybe push a button or two for context stuff. This doesn't use that kind of control scheme at all. Uh, the most confusing part is to turn right, you have to push R, which is on the left side of the keyboard, and to turn left, you have to push L, which is on the right side of the keyboard. Uh, the letters match the direction, but they don't, aren't, they're not on the right side of the keyboard. Uh, sometimes you'll need to type a word, too. For example, if you want to use a sword, type use sword for use sword. If you type actually type use sword, I don't think the game works. Uh, it thinks you're trying to say you uh, use the item called southeast sword, or se space sword. Or if you want to take or get an object, type g goblet for get goblet. Uh, yes, there are two rooms in here at least that describe goblets. Only one of them actually has a goblet in it. So remembering this this phrase, get goblet, you're like, okay, cool. They said there's a goblet in this room. I'm going to get it. And then it says, that's oh, a figure of your imagination. Figment of your imagination. Practice moving your figure now. Make it walk off the screen this way by typing R for turn right, and then W for walk. Yes. Uh, keyboards back then didn't necessarily have arrow keys. A lot of video games used like IJKL instead of WASD for controlling directions. This game did not do that. If you want to read the instructions again, make your figure walk this way. If you want to start the story, make your figure walk this way. Alright. I absolutely love the color, like the green and magenta tinged white in the font of this old Apple font. Like, this is what I remember from my childhood computer screens looking like. They weren't black and white. They weren't full color. They were this weird, like, yeah, we've got you know, like six colors, and magenta and green are going to like tint all of the, the letters. It's like instead of anti-aliasing, they use some coloring coloration, I think, because they didn't have like fading gray, so they instead of fading to gray, they would Use magenta and green. Anyway, long, long ago, mighty King Arthur ruled over the warring tribes of Britain. Tales tell of the brave deeds of the king and his knights of the Round Table, but no one has ever found Arthur's legendary castle or the treasures it holds. Near the end of your vacation trip through Britain, your family visits a tiny village in Cornwall. You are sick of antique shops, so you tell your family that you'll meet them later, back at the inn. I think this game is assuming that you're a little kid, because uh, you're because kids play video games in the 80s and not adults. But I like the implication here that you're like a dad and you're you're like there with your wife and kids, and you're like, I am not doing this vacation with you kids anymore. Go away, uh, honey. You take care of them. <laughs> I'm gonna go off on my own and have an adventure. Goodbye. You set off for a long hike. After walking for an hour through the wild hills and valleys, you are lost. You follow a stream that leads you into a misty valley. Oh, the load time. It's, it's loading text, and it waits that long. That's amazing. Uh, I'm running this on an Apple II emulator on a Windows PC, by the way. And this game was uh, made available by the... 
uh, Internet Archive people, uh, the 4 a.m. people, or the, the group that cracked it for use, that cracked the uh, ROM is called the 4 a.m. group or 4 a.m. It's called the 4 a.m. crack, the, the pack I downloaded. Uh, the fog is so thick that you lose sight of the stream. There's no path to follow, so you start climbing up a steep hill. It gets very rocky as you climb higher and higher. Suddenly your head pokes out above the mist, and you see something that takes your breath away. I thought they were going to show a picture. A huge stone castle looms before you. Cold winds howl across the mountains, making you shiver. You take a deep breath and walk towards the outer door into the castle, or in the castle's outer wall. Type knock if you wish to enter. Oh, I think I didn't actually show there's because there is art, like one drawing of the castle that's at the beginning of this game, but I don't think it showed up because it, it draws it and then goes into that intro thing. So I'll have to reset the game to show that off. So this is what the game looks like. And on the top, there's a your sort of outline of a guy or young lady with short hair, and some lines representing the room you're about to be in, and then at the bottom there's text. So it's it's less complex than an actual text adventure, and less complex than an actual video game, and it merges them together. But I played the shit out of this game really good. Uh, drawbridge. The door creaks open. You pass through the outer wall and find yourself perched on a rickety drawbridge over a moat filled with murky water and, a skin, and skinny crocodiles. In front of you, a heavy iron gate slowly, slowly clanks open. All right, so here we. In in my head originally when I came back to play this, I was like, oh, do you have to jump over something to get over their drawbridge? Is there like danger right here at the very beginning? But I was actually thinking of uh, uh, that uh, Dragon's Lair <laughs> game. So I can type W to walk, and that's walking. Just. Redrawing the sprite over and over again. I can also hit Z to zip to walk faster. It's not R for run because R is for write. Entry hall. Clang. The iron gate slammed shut. You're in a small stone room. You brush sticky cobwebs off your face and try to get used to the dim light. Now I can try ty typing things like get cobweb. Uh, but of course it, it gives you like a generic that's not important message. So I'm going to quickly walk through this first room. Uh, this is sort of a walkthrough because I have beaten this as an adult very recently, so I wasn't wasting time uh, to make the video. Reception room. From a large empty chair at the end of the room comes a ghostly voice that says, prepare for many dangers if you search for the treasure of a dark tower. Uh, and I'm not going to go up. I'm going to kind of want to do the basement and the uh, first floor first, and then move up. You can't die in this game. There's a bunch of situations that will send you back to the drawbridge, where you might accidentally type uh, no instead of yes, which means that you quit, uh, which is kind of like dying. But other than that, there's no real death in the game. You just get thrown out to the front of the in, uh, front bridge. Falcon room. And look at all the lovely art for the falcon room. You enter a room with large empty bird cages hanging from the ceiling. You peek into a cupboard that is filled with heavy gloves and tiny hoods made for birds. Wall tapestries show King Arthur hunting the falcons. So the gloves and the tapestries all seem like they'd be awesome to take and use or, you know, sell awesome wall tapestries as treasure, but they, they're not they're not programmed into the game nor is any actual decoration in that entire room. Kitchen. The kitchen fireplace is as big as your living room, at home. Inside the fireplace are blackened pots and cauldrons. A stone oven is built into the wall. You look inside and find a current bun. Okay, so you can take the bun, which makes a basket appear here, and then the basket like, is a one-way trip upstairs but doing that I miss stuff I need to do here and if I take the current button now the basket only appears once so I'm not going to do it and hopefully I'll, do, I'll just show it later 
So to not go up the stairs, or not go downstairs, you have to jump over them. And to go downstairs, you just walk into them. So jumping over uh, a landing stairs is, is uh, yeah, just like real life. Laundry, you're in a cold, damp room full of huge stone vats of gray, soapy water. All right, so this is the first thing that can send you back to the beginning. If you walk past that for that vat right next to you, you get sucked into it for some reason, and it spits you out of the moat. So I'm going to jump over it heroically. Forge. A blast of hot air hits you. An old furnace in the corner burns with an eerie orange glow. You pick your way through anvils, hammers, and unfinished swords lying here and there. Oh, that sounds awesome. I wish I could take any of it. Also, in any room where you might have to jump over something, it doesn't let you zip. You have to just walk. Mushroom room. You're in a dark, damp room. An ancient mushroom farm. You hear soft, squishy sounds in the dark. You can't take any mushrooms. A lot of this, you know, description is just ambiance. It's cute. There, a drawing of something. It means I can probably take it, because it's not a cobweb. Wine cellar. You shiver as you enter a chilly room. You're surrounded by dusty bottles. You blow off the dust and notice that one bottle has a golden cork. I don't remember that. It had a golden cork. Okay, well, let me get the bottle. G. Bottle. Moylan! You open the bottle and take a sip. Suddenly a robed figure appears. It's Moylan, King Arthur's own advisor, friend, and wizard. In a scratchy, vo uh, in a scratchy voice, Moylan says, Mark me well, the word is magic. Okay, so this is a randomized password the game will give you. I'm sure there's like six or seven of the passwords. Uh, the ones I've encountered playing through the game recently are dragon, magic, and unicorn. So remember that it's magic. Um, this comes basically at the end of the game. You have to know this. Um, I, can, I guess I'm walking up to Merlin. Turn around. Walk the other way. None of that really matters. I'm in inventory. You can see that I do have that bottle. Don't know if that bottle ever actually is useful as an item. I have a bottle that used to contain a wizard. Alright, and to go upstairs you have to walk and then right when you're near the stair sprite you hit C and then you... that's how you walk upstairs. Just kind of teleport up each step. Alright, uh... Jump over the laundry again. The stone bat of soapy water. Turnip cellar. You, saw, you stroll among baskets of well preserved turnips. You see that one looks fairly plump and juicy for a turnip. There's another item you can get, and I don't know if it's useful. You can't resist. You take a big bite of the turnip and feel a sudden burst of energy. Yeah, so you uh, you eat the turnip, and maybe that has an effect. Like I haven't tried playing the game without eating the turnip. Ooh, a ghost. Iron bars and heavy chains show that this was a prison. A menacing ghost appears and wails. It is I, Rians, the rebel lord of the North Wales. If you are a friend to my captor, Arthur, you are a foe to me. This is a timed event. If you don't leave the room quickly enough, he will throw you out into the moat. Uh, I can pass him and I get to a tunnel that leads back up into the rest of the castle. 
I could try to walk past him and get thrown into the moat. I think it's time to vent. I think if you just stand there, it'll it'll throw you out to the beginning, which will waste a little bit of time. All right, now climbing stairs is kind of obnoxious because you have to turn around, jump, and then hit C to go back up the stairs. Buttery, you're in a storeroom stacked with kegs of cider and sacks of grain and flour. There's also a large wheel of cheese that smells a little ripe. You cannot take the cheese. So this is another uh, obstacle type in the game. I love that it's barrels. Yeah. Uh, that plays a beep, like it's, but it's a hardware beep, So, and I don't have the emulator emulating hardware sounds right now. Uh, so all it is is a thing you have to jump over, but not jumping it over just lets you try again. There's a couple of that in the game. Usually it's items that are drawn, so well, it's always items that are drawn. It's no treat to visit a stable that hasn't been cleaned for 1,400 years. Rusty pitchfork is hanging on the wall. So that's a sprite, so I'm going to get it. The rusty pitchfork crumbles to pieces when you touch it. Hanging behind it is a fancy key. Fancy. Alright. I'm going to go this way just to show it off. Tunnel. You crawl through an old escape tunnel. It takes you up and up until at last you see a bit of light ahead. It's actually taking me down, so you're not right there. And we're back in the dungeon! Yay, let's go away. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is there. There's a way to just walk past that ghost. I seem... Yeah, I don't know. I think if you just stay in the screen, maybe you can run past it. But I don't think so, really. So the pitchfork at the back, it uncrumbled to dust, because things are made of ghosts here. Everything's ghostly. I think I could take it again, it would just vanish, and there would be a key there. I got a message saying that I can barely hear my mic. I tried turning it up before. Is that any better? Is that too but is that too because I, I had it louder before but it was ear piercingly loud? My mouth isn't too far, it's just a crappy mic. It's a it's a headset, so I'm not really a Twitch streamer, just a guy with a headset. Okay, let's get back to it. Just knock it down a tick, okay. How's that? Exciting. All right. Thank you. All right. So here's the secret of the game, the shortcut, 
which I don't think actually helps that much. I'm just doing it. Oh no, I can. It doesn't know the word current, but it knows the word bun. Yay! So, in this one, then once you make that appear, you can't jump over the stairs to get past because if you jump and touch the basket, you go up. I think this is just sort of a story thing because the kitchen, there's a basket that takes you right up into the dining hall. So, I think that's sort of the idea. Banquet room. A table 100 yards long. Wow, really? Is set with silver plates and golden wine beakers. Just for fun, you call out, please pass the ketchup, and your voice echoes for a whole minute. Cool. Alright. Uh, so there's two halves of the castle now, and I'm actually close to the smaller half I have to do first, so let's do that. Music room. Lutes, harps, and flutes line the shelves of the music room. This is cute. You can type get any one of the items. You take down the instrument, and all by itself, it plays a lovely, haunting song. Now, of course, it says that for any instrument you do. Okay. So we've gathered, what, like, three items so far? We've gotten one password. We haven't made a lot of progress. Hey, it's a person. Jester's room. You're in a room of silly costumes, fake candy, and party gags. A ghost in a pointed hat and curled up shoes pops out of a big cake and asks you, what do you say to a two-headed dragon? So this uh, joke answer is not anywhere in the game. I don't know if it just expects you to know it, but the answer is hello, hello. Because it has two heads. I didn't think this was funny when I was six, either. The ghost looks disappointed and says, You must have caught my act already. But to show he's a good sport, he gives you his hat, saying, Use this to cheer up sad people. So, of course, that's, that's a hint for what to do. And, and yes, we made a sad ghost and cheered up by giving it a hat. Slow. Writing room. On a large table you see fancy bottles of ink, pieces of parchment, and a quill ready for writing. I'm just playing Skyrim, where useless bottles, parchment, and quills are part of the items that you can take, but they don't do any good. So I guess in this game it doesn't let you take it, so it's, you're not wasting your time. Library. You're in a room filled with old books and parchments. Soft dust has settled everywhere. Yep, it would be awesome to read some old books. Not that you could probably read whatever form of English. Ancient Breton. But at least all the ghosts learn how to speak modern English. Sculpture gallery. The room is filled with row after row of life-size statues. The blank marble eyes of queens, kings, and heroes seems to stare right through you, and you feel the hair on the back of your neck prickle. Just creating some ambiance here. Santa Claus! Oh. Tapestry room. You enter a room hung with richly embroidered tapestries. Each one shows a unicorn of a different color. Guarding the tapestries is a sad gnome. The gnome sees you and says, Please cheer me up. You won't be sorry. So I'm going to use... Hat. Boom. The gnome puts on the silly hat and starts to giggle. 
He lifts one of the tapestries and shows you a secret door leading to a staircase. case. Still looks sad. They didn't they didn't update this right. Secret room. Up the stairs in a small tower, you meet a fair damsel. She doesn't seem to be in distress, but she looks bored, so you tell her the jester's joke. She laughs politely <laughs> and gives you a, a magnificent sword. I forgot that she laughed politely. I love that. She's not in distress. You don't save her. She's just, just there to give you a sword. Just in my mind, to so diffuse the awkward situation of you just walking into her secret lair and telling her a joke. If I give you this sword, will you go away? Thanks. And and thanks for guarding me, sad gnome. Like. I told you to make sure no one comes and finds me. I'm here in secret. But they gave you a silly hat, so you're letting people come up and bothering me now. And we're just making our way back. To the second floor. There's like no information of this game online anywhere. It was really hard to find. Uh, I was lucky somebody put a crack up on archive.org. I tried searching for it and found forums where people were vaguely asking about a game that sort of fits this description. They couldn't remember what it was called. So I'll have to like... I, I took screen caps of all the rooms and I'll have to make a map and put it on game facts or something. So there's there's some record of this game. Ballroom. You gaze across the long, empty dance floor. Suddenly, you see a ghost dressed in party finery sweeping through the room, dancing to silent music. Okay, here the text describes that ghost is in party finery. So that's very clearly a sheet with eye holes cut through it. It's party finery. Whoa, different colors. Bronze room. You are bathed in an eerie bronze glow. The light and a torch. Uh, the light from a torch on the wall is reflected by hundreds of bronze plates, candlesticks, and goblets. So the, in the instructions of this game, it uses get goblet as an example of how to use the G command. I swear I'm not a terrible typer, but the the game is so laggy with... The, yeah, so you can't actually take the goblets in this room. So it uses goblets as an example and then has goblets in this room. You can't take them. But there, but there is a goblet you can use later, so. Remember to jump over the stairs so you don't accidentally walk down them. And down the stairs is the reception hall from the very beginning of the game. Armor room. You are in a room full of shining suits of armor. You feel as if you're being watched. You hear a clanking behind you. It's probably just the wind. It actually is the wind. Or nothing happens to you here, at least. Crystal room. Crystal lamps light up a tiny crystal ball in, in a sparkling crystal table. Take that ball. Oh, it's Moylan again. When you touch the crystal ball, it shatters with a loud crack, releasing a cloud of smoke. The great wizard Merlin appears and says, To fight a dragon, you must have both courage and a sword. Well, I'm sure that won't come up in the next room. But I do have a sword. Arr. You enter a room filled with rubies, diamonds, etc. Uh, I actually have to do this like quickly. This is another timed event. 
Your sword's mighty blow fells the dragon. With a great hiss, the dragon melts away, along with all of his jewels, except for one perfect diamond. And now, no description. Thanks for hosting, Jagoff Troy. Silver Room. In a room with walls, floors, and ceiling of silver, you find a velvet pillow holding a fancy silver knife. Let's take that pillow. No, you can't take the pillow. Okay. My inventory. Key, bottle, turnip, sword, knife, and diamond. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You uh, you can't, if you run past the stairs, you can't actually go up them. You have to hit C while you're walking past the stairs, but you can't hit C while zipping past the stairs, apparently. Great Hall. Enter a magnificent room hung with colorful banners. You bump into the famous round table. One of the empty chairs has a sign. Siege Perilous, reserved for Sir Galad. Do you dare to sit in the Siege Perilous? Was well, obviously a trap. Like I had to come back and replay the game just to try and see what happens, because it was obviously a trap, and yes, it is a trap. Gold Room. Also orange. In a room hung with golden curtains and carpeted with spun gold, you find a golden cabinet. You open the cabinet and see a sparkling golden goblet. So this is the goblet you can get. Which is actually used as a weapon later. It asks you every time. It's hard to take a screenshot screenshot of that guy jumping because he's only drawn occasionally. <laughs> Portrait gallery. The long hall is lined with pictures of King Arthur's ancestors. His grandparents, his mother, Igraine, and his father, Uthru Pendragon. They don't look like the type to bake cookies or take a kid to a ball game. You decide to exit quickly. don't think Arthur actually knows Uther in the stories because of yeah, it looks like you're hitting your head every time you go up the stairs. Nursery. You're in a room with old toys strewn all over the floor. Tops, dolls, wooden horses, and puppets. The bed isn't made and dirty clothes are everywhere. Beep. That beeps. That's a hardware beep. Your feet get tangled in snarled top strings and doll hair. Perhaps you should jump over the toys. Clean your rooms, kids. Baths. Ah, sea monster. Again. You have to do this quickly. You bonk the monster on the head with a golden goblet. In a daze, it burbles and sinks under the water. A few bubbles pop to the surface, but that is all. You can't use the sword on that monster. 
because, of course, it's an adventure game. The sword is only for one thing. Goblet is only for one thing. Star Chamber. The dark room ceiling is studded with hundreds of diamonds that sparkle like stars. You see many constellations. Orion the Hunter, Leo the Lion, and the Scorpion. Don't think there's anything you can do in this room. Just, you know. Just the description. When you map it out, it's kind of cool because the silver, gold, and star rooms are all on top of each other. It's like, okay, that's where they threw all the rooms. They're just there for treasure. Lancelot's room. You enter a plain and modest room furnished with only a simple bed. But hanging on the wall is the shield of the mightiest knight of all, Sir Lancelot. Which, describe an awesome shield on the wall. Don't draw it, and don't let us take it. All right, so the room to the left here is optional. And going here takes away one of your treasures, but in the interest of showing everything. Blue Room. A ghostly voice moans, I am Garland, the Knight Invisible. Give me a stone that is crystal clear, or prepare to fight. You toss the diamond at the spot from which the voice is coming. The stone disappears into thin air. Garland's voice says, be on your way. I think you can just refuse to fight him. You can just leave. Uh, but it's not like having treasures does anything for the game, so the diamond is useless except for that part. Red room. All around you are curtains and walls made of bright red flames. The fiery heat is intense. Poible room. You step into a rich purple carpet. The walls are draped with purple velvet. Then you see a splendid chair with the royal coat of arms carved into wood. You are in King Rether's own room. White room. You enter a room hung with pure white silk. A white dove flies in the window and turns into the ghost of the beautiful Queen of Guinevere. She says, beware the sore desire to rest. A sip of tonic serves you best. You leave feeling a little puzzled. So that's a hint for a later puzzle in the game, but that puzzle never changes, so you don't actually need to go into that room if you've played before. Unlike the, uh, the wine cellar puzzle, which has a random password. Chartreuse Room. You are surrounded by walls, floors, ceiling, and furniture of bright yellow-green. What a sickening color. You decide to leave. Uh, this game came out when I was six, and so I was like seven or eight when I played this. This is where I learned the word chartreuse. Closet. You're in a storeroom filled with old clothes. Would you like to try something on? Yes. Pick out something to try on. Okay, a, a green tunic with a dragon design. A belt with a golden lion buckle. A white silk jacket with a unicorn emblem. Pointed hat with stars. A pair of gloves with embroidered falcons. So this is uh, one of the spots where the random password comes into play. So since the password was magic, I want the when it had with stars. It fits perfectly, and admit it, 
looks perfectly good on or looks pretty good on you too if you decide to wear it. So you need to cosplay in this game. Cosplaying is one of the uh, puzzles. Rose room. You're standing under a huge canopy of roses. Rose petals cover the floor. The sweet fragrance is bewitching you. You reach out to touch a beautiful pillow of red roses, and you are pricked by a thorn. Startled, you wake up from your trance. It describes like a moment of danger that you you escape from. You don't have to do anything, it's just there in the text. Herb room. Hundreds of jars and bottles line the shelves in front of you. The room smells of lavender and garlic. Ew. On the table, you smell. You, you see a steaming bowl of potion. On a shelf, you see a bottle labeled peptonic. So the hint from Guinevere told me to, that I want the tonic. And the tonic you pocket, but if you tell it to take the potion it will make you'll be like okay well drink it then I'll drink it and then you fall asleep and you wake up on the drawbridge which is this game version of time you keep all your stuff but climbing all the way back up here is obnoxious at this point You enter a room with ivy-colored walls. A vine creeps toward you. It winds around your feet and it creeps toward your neck, grasping tighter and tighter. You can't actually type until the animation here is done. Ah, oh, dang it. I didn't type fast enough. I have to go all the way back off. Uh, do you dare to re-enter the king's castle? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's like a point where if you accidentally type no, the game is over. You start all over again. And it would not let me type. So I have to go all the way back up. Oh boy. That was like five rooms away from the end. We are on the second floor now. Try zip. Switching it into a walk? Nope. Doesn't work. You know, they could have said use these three keys to move, or just have instructions for which part, you know, go up in the room, go to the next room to the right. But they were trying to hybridize. Wisps of smoke float around the room on the floor, slivers of shattered crystals. Uh, the, this game came, came with two discs, and the other disc is a different game, which I don't remember as well. I might try playing that later too, which would be fun because it would be a blind playthrough. Semi blind, because I remember like one or two things from it from the 80s. Again, it's going to try and get me to sit there. Well, already behind schedule. And since there's something to jump over in this game, or in this screen, you can't run. I guess S for stop, right? So I could zip 
Stop. Stop. Nope. Nope. That does not work. That is super awkward controls. So in attempting to make things go faster, figure out a way to run to the stairs and go up them, I have wasted a whole bunch more time. I don't think I ever thought to make a map as a kid of this. It's one of those things they always told you to do in adventure games they never actually got into doing. It makes the game much more playable. When it's one of like the only games you have as a kid, you can be part of part of the fun of the game is memorizing everything. Or playing it so much you have kind of a feel of what's around. We are on the seventh floor now. And we were on the eighth floor where we got kicked out, so. We are almost back to where we were. So let's try and make it, let it, uh, let us type. It's really hard to see what, like, I'm hitting you, I'm hitting you a bunch. Let me type, let me type you. Knife. There we go. You slash the vines to bits. Pieces of the pieces whine and hiss as they flutter to the floor. This is one of the like the one creature you have to kill that respawns to. It's such a weird timing because you have to wait for the animation and then you then you can type. But if you wait too much after the animation is done, you can't type and it kicks you out of the castle. Moss room. You almost fall as you step into a room of slippery moss-covered stones. Be careful. Oh, here's another room I have to type quickly. Soft room. It's soft. You may fall asleep. Use the tonic. You uncork the tonic bottle and with your last bit of energy lift it to your lips. Right away your old pep returns. You feel ready for anything. So imagine playing this as like a seven year old where your reading isn't that quick and you've not even done reading the description of what's happening when suddenly you're kicked out of the castle again. Hey, Moylan. Sorcery room. He's gone. Mystical orbs, stones, and potions shine in the darkened room. From the shadows, Merlin appears. You have proven yourself worthy, he says. He shows you a small locked door and disappears. Well, I have a fancy key. The key turned in the lock, but the door won't open. Then you hear the voice of Queen Guinevere whisper. This door requires a second key. Use the secret word for Merlin. Okay, so I have to use... Use the secret word, which was magic. Yeah. Crenellation. 
dark tower. You climb a long spiral staircase. At the top is a heavy door with a tiny peephole in it. You see two eyes staring at you. From behind the closed door, you hear a voice command. Open the door to the one who says magic and who wears the hat. Yes. This is much more whimsical when the password was unicorn. As a servant opens the door, you enter a room lighted with hundreds of candles. Before you stands... The ghost of King Arthur. He is dressed like magnific magnificent purple robes and carries a jewel-encrusted sword, his famous blade Excalibur. One test remains, young adventurer, he says. Answer just one question and my treasure is yours. We don't know if this is a random question or what. Let's find out. Ah, yes. It is random. So then he asks you a random question about something you've seen in the in the game. Uh, the things he's asking about don't change from game to game, but you have to know the game pretty well. Uh, so tell me, Arthur says, whom did you meet in the castle wine cellar? Last time I played it was who was guarding the tapestries of the unicorns, and that was the gnome. This time it's Merlin. Correct, says King Arthur. You have proven yourself worthy of a very special gift. Suddenly Merlin himself appears and hands you a twinkling magic wand. Use it with care and it will be it'll take you far, Merlin says. Oh, cool. So the last time I played the game, the password was unicorn and my prize was a baby unicorn. Which I don't do not want that responsibility. So now I have a magic wand, which is much better. Thank you, Your Highness, you say. I am deeply honored. Suddenly, or silently, King Arthur touches his sword to each of your shoulders. Now you are a true knight of the round table. Sure, thanks. Then slowly he fades from view. You blink and shiver, and suddenly you are back in the misty valley where you first got lost. You are as lost as ever. You look at the stick in your hand. Timidly, you wave it in the air. Poof, you're standing in front of the inn among some very startled local kids. Oh, see, I am a kid in this game. I assume. Maybe not, but I think it just implied I was a kid. You pocket the wand and go inside and tell your family all about a quiet stroll in the country. The end. Take out the program disc. Okay, so I'm going to reboot the disc so you can see the cool uh, intro art. So that is actually running a program to draw that art like with lines and pixels and fills and stuff. Which is why that it doesn't like scan in like a bitmap image would. It just is drawing it <laughs> like a drawing program would draw it. So that was the uh, first of the two games that come on this disc. So it's called uh, Tales of Fantasy, and this was the Dark Tower, which makes it impossible to search for because it's not the Dark Tower board game. It has nothing to do with that. So I might play the other one later, but uh, you know, thank you for watching if you watch this. And if you didn't watch this, then you can't hear me right now. So, you know, whatever. It's cool.